Hello, this brief video will illustrate how to do the, um, the fourth tutorial, that is the, the first part where we convert uh, the, the bracket within the third tutorial into a uh, shell element. So the first thing to do was to convert by duplicating, to duplicate, you click duplicate and that will create a, a copy of your, uh, of your original uh, simulation. Then we can always rename it to bracket 2D. Then, what we're going to do is first enter design modeler, design modeler to, sorry, design modeler, geometry step, to modify the geometry. Okay, so now we are in design modeler, and we are going to convert the 3D bracket into an assembly of surfaces. So there are two ways of doing that. The first one is automatic. But it doesn't always work. So to do that, you go to Tool, Mid Surface. So that creates a detail of the mid surface. We can select Automatic. And we need to give some zone between which two planes will be automatically detected as being paired. So 10 and 16, because we know that they are the thickness of the two, the two systems here. And then we ask it to find the pairs now, by five pairs now, yes. It has found them, and then we can now, okay, you can see now, they are all both, the pairs are in, uh, in blue and cyan. And we can generate, and that's it. We have got, we have got two uh, surface bodies, two surface bodies here, automatically detected. Now, that worked very well, but it didn't always work, so I'll show you how to do it manually when the surface is made so I'm going to delete that delete that uh, mid surface feature and start again so we go back start again again no body is only solid okay so do it again go to tool same 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 uh, same tool it's called mid surface let's do it manually so change to manually manual right to do that what you do is you select pairs one pair Okay, and now I can select two pairs. So this one, and then Control Select the opposite that I know. Okay. Now they gone purple. Fine. Get that one, and its opposite is that one. That's fine. Found it. This one, and finally I need to do it again. Okay. So, so we have got here. We as usual we apply three face pairs and we generate, and we get oh, exactly the same thing. Perfect. So now we have done that. We can close Design Modeler and go back to Workbench. We are back in Workbench and the next stage, as usual in Finite Elements, consists in clicking on, well, here, Model, which will start uh, the mechanical interface. Do that now. Yes, now, of course, I have changed geometry, so it wants it to be, uh, which is upstream, above it, so it needs to be red. Of course, I want to do that. And it will start mechanical in a few seconds. Okay, so we now are in mechanical. And now we have got in mechanical this model. So we have to do a lot of things. We need to mesh and we need to, to check the support. As you can see in the tree, supports have been undefined. Of course, we have changed the, 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 the geometry. So the, uh, the faces on which the support and forces were uh, applied are not working anymore. Okay, so that's fine. And of course, all the solutions are failed. Right. So let's uh, let's first check that the model is fine. So we have got a geometry, a solid, and two surface bodies. I forgot to rename them at the stage, but this one, this first body, which is here. Okay, so it will be our, our flange and 16 millimeter, and it's made of which is the material. It's made of structural steel. Perfect. And it'll be the same, of course, for the body. This body here, which is the web. The matter then to attain 10 millimeter and treasure seal again. Okay, absolutely fine. So let's uh, first change the support. Pick support. Uh, geometry is not selected because it disappeared. It used to be on a uh, 3D model. So simply is we change it. Okay, so selection here. Fine. I need to use edges. So the, the filter. Selection filter. Control. Select. 
these three. Apply them. Three of these. Correct. I'm pleased. Next one is a force. The force again. No selection. So what do I want to do? I want to apply the force on here. So I need to select face. These one and two. And sometimes I'm sure you have to look under. It's pretty odd, but apply them. Two faces looking fine. Uh, the vector indicates what's going on, and the face only to apply is not. It doesn't, it doesn't apply on just a, uh, a point. It's on all that's uh, highlighted. Okay, let's check. We have minus twenty-seven to twelve. That's fine. Okay, great. So that's our um, boundary conditions done. Before we can solve, we need to fix the mesh. So I'm going to delete that multi-zone, which was inserted previously when we wanted to, to refine the mesh for the 3D model. So let's delete it. And we are just going to do a very rough mesh using the basic meshing. So I'm going to change relevance to coarse. To do it so put to uh, minus 100 sometimes it, it gives you the uh the slider instead so that's that's bad bad relevance and uh let's update the mesh that's going to run a little bit and it finds that mesh not an amazing mesh but a mesh nonetheless let's check how many Nodes we have, and we have got very, 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 very few nodes here. Okay, you you might have different uh, different nodes depending on a uh, different number of nodes depending on the, on the, on the setup you have uh, uh, you have given. But that's that's what we have. No, now we should be able to solve. Let's solve. Sorry, you want me something and a pause. Okay, so after I don't know, forty seconds, my laptop is a bit slow. It has uh, it has reached a solution. Okay, so look at it. So. My different solution objects: deformation, stress, error, and here my stress to density factor have been all been uh, calculated very nicely. So we focus on the total deformation and the equivalent stress from the from my this, and you can compare the values here or here with what you obtain for, um, for the full 3D model. Uh, keeping in mind that you have to compare like with like. I haven't done. A convergence study here, and the mesh I uh, I chose is pretty rough, as you can see here. I made a small mistake. What I wanted you to to check that was in course, and here I actually made it more. Um, you have, you have got two parameters in under mesh to to uh, to choose a uh, meshing in the most rough way. As we have seen previously, we can do much much better by uh, by inserting a method and uh, and sizing. But if you don't want to, if you just want to a quick calculation, you can get. You can choose. You can first of all get the relevant center from coarse to, uh, to fine, and then you can also modify uh, the slider to to do it. That's the default is zero, uh, and that's what for you you would have maybe when you start. Uh, of course, that's, that's done. But that's pretty much what I wanted to show you here. That um, we can. So that's there we go. That's probably a mesh that you use. The same mesh that you would have used at first, with yeah, around a thousand thousand nodes and, uh, and elements. Now, so we, we obtained so the main advantage of, of doing uh, uh, shell elements is that well, they, uh, you will get a lot less node than a full 3D. 3D. I forgot to, to show that we can we can display six shells, and which is purely cosmetic. It just looks more like uh, like uh, so. We put 16 millimeter and, and 10 millimeter here to, to represent more. But in many situations. Shells are extremely uh, useful elements. They are a lot more cheaper than uh, than full 3D. Another advantage is that shells can uh, can also take a bending, and as the degrees of freedoms uh, of the nodes of shells can also um, include rotations, and the loads can also include uh, moments. Well, while, while I'm here, I can oh need to need to solve again. Of course, I change the mesh. Okay, so let's solve again. Okay, so it has sold with a with a finer mesh. Does it change much? No, not really. Uh, slightly different. Not much. It's starting to uh, to converge, uh, basically. But 
wanted to show you as well if you haven't had time to play yet with uh with some of the features that is quite useful in in, in results so you have got a scaling here first of all so here it's in quite a large scaling uh which is why it looks so deformed I mean, it, it wouldn't be so deformed. so it, sometimes you want to, to look at the true scale you can see that true scale is what the amount of deformation it's not that much not visible with the naked eye anyway so it's fine to leave it to let it do a, a auto scale to visualize and we can also modify uh, modify how things are presented i re especially like to show uh, the undeformed wireframe because it, dis it displays you can see the difference it's always uh, obvious but sometimes it's better to show the elements as well you can also use smooth control instead or control band or your choice really uh, on the wireframe at all but yeah i like uh, the undeformed wireframe and deformed model is a bit more confusing i think so i like undeformed wireframe. okay there's a lot of way to represent but the important message from from this uh, mini tutorial well part, mini part of the tutorial is that shell elements are, can be very very useful and uh, can give very similar results to uh, to 3d elements when the geometry is is applicable of course and uh, something else is of course you should now do uh, convergence uh, study to increase increase the uh, the fineness fine fineness of, of the mesh to uh, to see whether you are how, how converged are your results is in a stress or total deformation okay so next we are going to do 1d elements but that will be in a separate video <laughs>